breaking news. 2,000 people infected. It's now being reported that as many as 2,000 people in Salt Lake County area of Utah may be at risk of contracting hepatitis A after visiting a local 7-Eleven store where an employee who was diagnosed with the virus came to work during their infectious period and took it upon themselves to handle the food. Utah isn't the only state facing this issue. Salt Lake County's ongoing outbreak which began in November of 2017 is part of a multi-state resurgence of the disease over the course of the last year. The outbreak has now affecting primarily California, Kentucky, and Michigan, and now Utah. Hepatitis A is a virus that causes acute liver inflammation and is typically spread through sexual contact, needle sharing, or by consuming food that has been contaminated by infected feces. The infection manifests with symptoms of abdominal pain, fever, diarrhea, and vomiting, but if it goes untreated, prolonged liver inflammation can result in death. Salt Lake County Health Authorities are asking for people who may have come in contact with this contaminated food to please go get vaccinated at your nearest medical facility and the Salt Lake County Health Department is offering free vaccinations to those without insurance. Slate reports. Dirty Rotten Scallions Why the recent Hepatitis A outbreak can be traced to third world produce People in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, are already familiar with the downside of the global economy. The steel mills that once employed tens of thousands have long since closed, unable to compete with low-cost labor in Asia. And now the residents of the former steel capital are enduring another effect of expanding world trade. The biggest hepatitis A outbreak in U.S. history, at least 540 cases and three deaths. Hepatitis A is a virus usually transmitted by human fecal matter on food and is endemic in many poor parts of the world. Symptoms, which include jaundice, fever, and fatigue, can range from mild to deadly. This outbreak apparently stemmed from green onions, also known as scallions served on tacos and other dishes at the Chi Chi's restaurant in the Beaver Valley Mall. More than half the green onions consumed in the United States are grown in Mexico. Investigators believe that the batch of onions that made its way to Chi Chi's came from three Mexican growers implicated in smaller outbreaks in Georgia and Tennessee that occurred in September. They also suspect that questionable food handling practice in that particular restaurant caused the virus to spread to so many people. This incident may seem isolated, but it highlights a rising problem that is only going to grow worse. Produce grown in developing countries is bringing the diseases of those countries to America. How is this happening? The endless quest for cheaper land and labor pushes even more of our agriculture into other countries. How many oranges still grow in Orange County, California, or Orange County, Florida, once full of endless groves and now home to Disneyland and Disney World? as well as vast suburban sprawl. In addition, Americans are heeding the sound advice of health authorities to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, and they want a variety of choices at any time of year. The result, more crops are grown in hot distant places and then shipped stateside. Indeed, at certain times of the year, more than 70% of the fresh produce in the United States comes from Mexico. The problem, as anyone who has worked on this issue knows, is that many countries that grow produce for the United States, such as Mexico, Guatemala, and the Philippines, have limited sources of sanitary water, including the water used to irrigate the crops. As a result, a great deal of freshly picked produce can pass through streams of untreated waste before making its way to the United States. Plus, field hands often have no toilet facilities or clean water to wash their hands. Of course, Many growers in Mexico and other countries strive to keep their fields hygienic, and migrant workers can bring diseases when they come to pick crops in the United States, too. Estimates of cases of foodborne disease in the United States range from 6.5 million to 81 million annually, and yet most of the time these illnesses escape public attention. An individual or a group gets knocked out by severe gastrointestinal symptoms but usually recovers. Most commonly, the culprit is E. coli, the ubiquitous bacteria in the human gut that often causes traveler's diarrhea. With the exception of the strain called O157 colon H7, often transmitted by undercooked meat and by lettuce, 
most varieties of E. coli that cause disease remain unknown. This means that even if someone is sick enough to go to the doctor chances are nothing will be cultured, and unless some alert health officials notice a connection between cases, even large outbreaks can go unrecognized. Of course, E. coli is not the only dangerous microbe to hitch a ride on our food. Bacteria such as Salmonella and Shigellosis and a parasite called Cyclospora, made famous by outbreaks caused by berries from Guatemala, are among the many other germs all striking with increasing frequency. For reasons buried deep in legislative history, the Food and Drug Administration is responsible for assuring the safety of imported produce, and it faces an overwhelming task. Mexico, for example, shipped 1.9 billion pounds of tomatoes alone to the United States last year. In a press release titled Tips to Prevent Foodborne Illness This Holiday Season Disseminated This Week, the agency offers advice such as wash hands and food contact surfaces often. Bacteria can spread throughout the kitchen, and don't cross-contaminate, don't let bacteria spread from one food to another. That's fine except it fails to take into account the fact that that Americans increasingly get their meals in restaurants where food handlers might not be as careful as people in their own homes, and that organisms like Cyclospora cannot be washed off. And buying organic will not help, organic foods, because of the way they are grown, in manure, are often exposed to even more microbes. The health benefits of fruits and vegetables are so great that we should continue to eat them but it's always advisable to wash them first, though, again, this is not a foolproof solution. Risk of foodborne germs is something we'll just have to live with. Like the residents of Beaver County, we've all become gastronomic travelers in the global economy. Okay, time to call a duck by its name. This disease was all but eradicated in the United States until we had President Barack Hussein Obama open our borders to every third world nation reject out there. In the year 2000, hepatitis A was considered very rare in the U.S. and it was a virus reserved for the third world, but decades of globalism have brought us to this. Since the powers that be don't have to live with the elements they let into this country without fitting they don't care. When was the last time we saw Obama, Bush, Clinton or Bush Sr. picking up some nachos or 7-Eleven? Please share if you agree we need to fully vet who comes into our home. home.